I am a member of the clinical trials team here at UCSF Memory and Aging Center and our role as the clinical trials team is not only to run these clinical trials that the pharmaceutical companies and biotechs are offering, but we also um, work very hard with scientists not just at UCSF but across the world to try to identify new treatment molecules, treatment targets and help them uh, bring it to human phase testing. And also we work really hard with all the various pharmaceuticals to try to nudge them in what we think is the right direction or uh, try to collaborate with and my outline today. So for the first half, I, what I think I'll do today is actually give everyone an update on what's going on in the dementia clinical trial world over the last year. Uh, those of you who've been paying attention know that um, a lot of the news said the drug did not work. But that doesn't mean these trials were failed because these were very well run trials that also provided a lot of data that we can learn of what's working, what's not, and guide us in the right direction for the next phase. So I would say these are negative trials that can still teach us a lot. For the second half, I will go into what the clinical trials team here at uh, UCSF is doing and how we're exploring new methodologies and new targets. And uh, just as an aside, I will show a slide of all the available clinical trials at the Memory and Aging Center at the very end, but that information is also available outside on the sheets of paper you can take home, staffed by our uh, trials manager, Mary Kessler, who can answer a lot of questions as well. All right, so briefly, I uh, just want to go over some background to guide our talk. Uh, we all know Alzheimer's is made up of two proteins pathologically, beta amyloid and tau. So beta amyloid first exists as this APP amyloid precursor protein in the membrane, and it's cut up by two enzymes, a beta secretase and a gamma secretase. And after it's cut up, it floats away first as a soluble uh, monomer, an oligomer, and for reasons we don't know, it starts clumping together and then becoming fibros and ultimately the sticky plaques that we see. Tau then is a maiden neuron, and this is my picture of a cell. And here is a tau protein it's made in the neuron. And after it's made, it's modified, meaning the cell, for various reasons, will add little uh, groups to the protein, like little carbohydrate groups, phosphate groups. And in a normal setting, we know that tau works to stabilize microtubules, which is kind of like a highway scaffolding structure in the neuron that maintains um, cell stability, but the cell can also use it to transport goods up and down the cell. Now, for reasons we don't know, the tau protein can sometimes be uh, abnormally modified. Maybe it gets added an extra acetate group or a lot of new phosphate groups, kind of like this yellow circle here. And for reasons we, we're not entirely sure, the, the tau then starts to lose its functions. It leaves the microtubule. The microtubule is not as stable. And the tau will start aggregating and becoming toxic and ultimately fo forming these um, aggregates called tangles. But we also now know that the tau protein can exit the neuron and travel to other neurons and then replicate other tau proteins and making them bad and making them aggregate together and causing a, a downstream effect. Okay, so with that in mind, we'll talk about the first clinical trial update over the last year, uh, solanezumab. Some of you uh, may know this is an antibody that was really designed to attack the soluble form, the mon monomeric form of amyloid protein. The trial results were announced as negative in late 2016, but the paper was finally published about a month ago, two months ago, and now I can share some of the data with you. So this antibody was designed to get rid of amyloid, soluble amyloid, and the, one of the main outcomes of the trial is the memory test. The people on the placebo were in blue, people on the drug were in red, and as you go up the scale, you were actually doing worse on the memory test. So you see there's actually a separation. Not a lot, a little bit. Unfortunately, it was not significant. So the p-value of less than 0 0.5 is usually considered significant. This was 0 .1, oh, 0 0.05, and this was actually 0 0.1. They also had a functional test um, a scale measuring how well you are able to do things day to day in life, like doing your laundry, eating, things like that. And there was still a separation. So um, the people on the placebo did a little worse than the people on uh, the drug. They also looked at a bunch of other scales, Minimento, a very common uh, memory test, CDR, a very common scale of how, th how you're doing in life. And you can actually see Everything was moving in the right direction, but it just wasn't enough. But everything was kind of nudging in the right direction. And for those of you who, um, 
remember your statistics, some of these were actually significant, but it was never the primary measure for this drug, so it was not enough for the FDA to approve this. If we look at whether this drug is actually doing anything to the amyloid, we see that in the cerebrospinal fluid, the amyloid actually increased. Now, we're not too sure if this is because the, amyloid is, the, the drug is pulling the amyloid from the brain or it's just making the amyloid stay around longer. And there's actually some theory that's actually pulling amyloid, which exists also in your blood, back into the CSF. We don't really know. If you use amyloid PET scans to look at the patients and to measure how much of that placky amyloid is in the brain, unfortunately, there was no significant difference between the treatment group and the ones who got the drug. So that's solanezumab. Next, we're gonna go over another drug that works slightly differently uh, from Merck. And this drug, I'm not gonna pronounce the name, but actually um, works on inhibiting this enzyme that clips the, uh, the precursor amyloid, so it stops amyloid production. The trial was first studied in patients with mild to moderate Alzheimer's, was stopped in early 2017. It did actually reduce amyloid and CSF by quite a bit, a bit, and it did actually reduce the amyloid in the brain, the placky, sticky kind, by a little bit by PET scan. But unfortunately, there was no clinical benefit. Just last month, Merck also announced that they're stopping this trial in patients who only have a little bit of symptoms, still in the MCI stage, but they already have plaques of amyloid in the brain by PET scan. And they didn't announce any data yet, but they said after an analysis, they had decided that it was not going to be effective, and they stopped it. So what does this tell us? This tells us that stopping production of amyloid, you may have to give it very, very early. These are patients who already have some symptoms, so it may not work. But it definitely does seem to stop uh, amyloid production, but it may have to be given very, very early. Next is a clinical trial that's still actively ongoing and has been in a lot of news lately. It's called aducanumab. This antibody was actually designed to attack the more sticky and placky amyloids. And the, some of the early results were announced uh, last year around November. And this is quite exciting. So over here, this is a measure of how much amyloid plaque, the sticky one, um, by PET scan is in the brain. And these are patients who are still during the double blind phase of the trial, which means some people got the drug, some people got placebo. And the, the higher dose you get, the more amyloid reduction you have, which is good. It means the drug is doing what it's supposed to do. What's more exciting is that after this double blind phase, when, on the open label phase, when uh, even patients on placebo were switched to this antibody, you can see a pretty dramatic drop in amyloid levels. So, and this has not been seen before with any drug. So the drug is really attacking the sticky amyloid plaques and getting rid of it. They also showed some clinical data, how patients did on memory tests. I struggled to show this because in an open label trial, it's really hard to interpret these clinical outcomes because everybody knows everybody is getting the drug. So it's hard to really evaluate someone um, without bias. But I'll show just one slide. So the people who um, are on the higher doses of drugs still seem to do better than people who are uh, on the lower doses of the drug. But what's interesting with me is that people on placebo who switched to drugs did not have a little increase in their performance in the memory. So, but like I said, it's hard to really interpret these open label data, so we'll skip that for now. Okay, so what did we learn from all these trials? Well, antibodies attacking the soluble monomers may not be effective. A, a drug that stops the production of amyloid may have to be given very, very early, and uh, active um, trials are on the way evaluating people with no symptoms whatsoever, it's even some people who don't even have amyloid yet. And an antib antibody that attacks uh, sticky amyloid, well, the jury is still out, and we should have a readout by about 2020 of that aducanumab trial. Okay. And uh, right now at UCSF, we are running two amyloid antibody trials that are attacking the sticky type of amyloid. And in terms of tau, um, we do have uh, three clinical trials that are using tau antibodies to stop the spread of t uh, abnormal tau that I mentioned before. And of note, this one from AVI was actually first developed at the tau consortium, which is what Dr. Miller mentioned earlier. And we are also working with investigators in looking at uh, novel mechanisms of how to stop um, tau and running clinical trials there. That's a very uh, investigator initiated. Okay, very quickly, I just want to take one quick minute. We're also exploring new methodologies and how to conduct clinical trials. We're taking a page from cancer, where they're taking all these different types of cancer, but have the same genetic mutation to study under one clinical trial. 
And uh, our goal is to kind of uh, save people with Alzheimer's, CBS, PSP, all have tau, so we should study them all together. And the goal of that is really, um, this is a very cool picture from a recent clinical, uh, cancer clinical trial where on the left here are different types of cancer, and on the top here are the same type of mutations but in slightly different areas. And you can see that just because they have the same mutation, if they're in different areas, they still respond differently. And the goal one day in the future is maybe this can translate to dementia clinical trials, where on the left it's people with Alzheimer's, CBS, PSP, things like that. And on the top is people with different types of tau, and we study them in one group, we can really find out who responds to what kind of treatments. So we're doing that. This, uh, this is the first time this type of basket trial is completed at UCSF, called a TPI-287. And I'll just say that um, our analysis, we are able to recruit these different types of patients distinctly, and we're starting to see differences um, in these type of patients. The Alzheimer's group had more sensitivity reactions, the CBS, PSP had none. There seems to be a more of a signal in the CBS group. So we're starting to explore these differences of different types of patients that may share the same pathology. And lastly, we're also working on exploring new targets. This is uh, work from Dr. Zachary Miller, who mentioned earlier that patients with a certain pathology, TDP43, have more autoimmune disease. He's also discovered that they have more inflammatory proteins in their, in their CSF and blood. And uh, that's really exciting. So we're working actively with various investigators and scientists to see maybe there are drugs out there that can affect these inflammatory um, reactions and processes. And that could be a very novel, exciting new way of treatment that really Really, people haven't explored that much yet. So thank you, especially to all the patients and families here to make all of this data possible. And like I said, I'll leave this up here. These are the active clinical trials going on here at UCSF. Thank you.